I, uh, I started Victorious Gaming, if you ever talked to me. Good morning, Apex University. My name is Dan, and I'll be your coach for today. I hope you all enjoyed your weekend, and today's video is going to be about team play. One of the first things that you have to learn as an esports coach and teach your teams is that all teammates following a bad plan together is far more difficult to beat than a whole bunch of individual players that are executing great plans but aren't working together at all. In general, you want to always be aware of what your teammates are doing and play in such a way that you either extract value out of what they are doing or grant them value out of what you are doing. You want to either enable or be enabled by your teammates and the better you are, the more you can force value out of your teammates no no matter how good or bad they are. So you start off jumping towards the supply ship. You guys show up a little bit late there because at the last moment you decided to ping it. Luckily you get the purple armor off the top, but there are no weapons for you there. Something important to remember is that when you drop in a spot like this where you are very susceptible to RNG, don't be afraid to just dip out. If you're not lucky with a starting weapon or you don't find a good one and you want to preserve your purple armor, you're not going to be of any help to your team by just dying here. So warn them, guys, I don't have a weapon, I'm going to jump off. Luckily, when you go downstairs, you end up finding a weapon. By the way, don't forget to put away your grenade when you're running, it still makes you slower. After finding yourself an EVA 8 as well as an RE45, you are isolated from your teammates and there is an opponent nearby. You get warned about him and you have a great armor so you're not afraid to take the fight. Sadly, we notice here that you are trying to use the corner as cover, but you mistime your peek completely. If we go back and look at that, we notice that you try to go into cover for your reload, but you don't actually wait it out. You overexpose yourself way too quickly, so fast that he probably hasn't even adjusted his aim yet, so you haven't actually made it more difficult for him to hit you. Not only that, but you want to wait with peeking until you've actually reloaded and can instantly take your shot, because any time that you're exposed now, while well, you can shoot yet, you're just giving them an opportunity for free damage on you. In this situation, after finding a weapon, I would have probably gone back to my teammates, because by being close together, especially once you get lucky with a great armor, it will become increasingly difficult for them to beat you. Instead, you end up taking a fight by yourself, and you mistime your cover usage, because of that you go down. Luckily, you did do plenty of damage and the opponent doesn't finish you off for an armor swap, so by the time your teammates show up, they're able to finish off the fight just fine and you guys move on. Later into the game, you guys make your way over to Thunderdome and as you approach, you notice that there is a fight going on. This gives you the time to grab a proper position against these teams and work yourself from the outside inward. Remember that if you're the third party, you always want to take that little bit of extra time to scout and make sure you don't end up being sandwiched in the middle of the fight. That's the luxury you have by showing up late. And there's still another team somewhere out there. There's a team there and a team over there. Stay together, stay together, stay together. Yeah, we have to make a coordinated push. Do not fucking separate. You and your teammates decide here that you require a coordinated push just like we were talking about and you need to not push by yourself, so far very good. But now the next question is, where do you push from and who do you push towards? We know that you always want to work your way outside inwards in a fight that involves multiple teams, but you're in the difficult situation that there is no west side to this fight because you're on the edge of the map and the team that you spotted first is in the cage where it is very difficult to push them or get above them or behind them. Because of that, it might be tempting to rotate all the way around towards the other team. There is also no zone that you can hold because you're all in the next circle already. The problem with pushing the far away team is first of all giving up your high ground advantage while going into unknown territory, but second of all the fact that it still gives you no way whatsoever to push the team you just spotted in the cage. On top of that, with the direction that you're coming from now, even though it might take a while before you see an opportunity in which you can push, you know that you've cleared behind you. You've cleared the team off the supply ship and you've cleared the area that you came from. So right now if any enemy teams show up for this fight as well, it probably will not be behind you, but rather from the Skull Town or Runoff or Airbase direction. Because of that, you generally want to avoid rotating all the way around a team fight towards the other end because it means you need to scout once again for opponents. If you do, realize it's going to be a far slower push unless you have a better methodical approach with a lot of cover or high ground and even then you need to be extra aware of your surroundings because at any given time you might not be the only third party showing up. In this situation, aside from not splitting up, the other thing I would tell my team is not to shoot yet. You can't really do effective damage from this range to that team unless you've got a powerful sniper such as the longbow or a kraber, so instead I want to keep my presence here hidden while we find a way to attack the cage. 
As long as they don't see you, it is pretty easy to approach this cage without being noticed by either team, but the moment you shoot they are aware of your presence, and because they have such an easily defendable position, being sandwiched isn't necessarily that scary for them. Unless, of course, one of the teams start pushing the other team, and that gives you your opportunity to go third party them. Because of that, it is up to you to either find a way to attack the team in the cage, where you are safe from getting third partied by the other team, or to get into a defendable position where you can easily see the fight going on and wait for one of the teams to push up on one another, or have done enough damage that you can move in on it and overcome the disadvantage of the position. Sadly, even though you're the third party, whenever you're in a situation like this where both teams have very defendable positions and aren't really committed to the fight, it's almost impossible to rush in and do anything meaningful and you end up running with your teammates following you towards the second team, it is very tempting to keep on running around and looking for a way in and that is sort of okay but be slower about it because what you are doing now is by constantly looking around and looking for scenarios to fight in, you're also making yourself vulnerable to being attacked. An opponent ends up running by that is not in any way aware of your presence but spots you mid-transition which makes you vulnerable. Had you been defending the spot where you guys were scouting earlier before you went here, you would have been fine because a passing opponent could not have attacked you there as easily. After you go down, the first thing that goes through my mind is telling my teammates that there is a purple armor on your body. You guys got somewhat lucky, with only one fight behind you, you all have level 3 and 4 armor, but even though your teammates already have that, as soon as you die, your death box has a fully charged purple armor in it. The enemies will know that because they have hit you and will probably let their team know. The danger, of course, is that one of the enemies that doesn't have a purple armor or needs to heal, picks it up to full heal. The reason you want to tell your teammates is that if they get into a fight with the rest of the enemies here, knowing that your purple armor is fully charged on that body and swapping it with a damaged one so that it cannot be used against them is extremely powerful. And that's one of the examples of forcing value. Even though you are dead, you can still grant your team value by thinking about what you can do to cover for them. In this case, you can't literally cover them, but you can still help them out in the fight. We're going to move on to the next game and see what you did or could have done to get value out of your teammates or to create value for them. As you guys drop, your teammate pings on top of the watchtower, letting you know that he is going to go there. Now, the watchtower has enough loot for three people if you're lucky. If you're unlucky, it might not quite be enough, but at least it's a fairly safe spot from which you can drop into cascades or go towards the artillery tunnel. However, it's completely valid if your teammates are going up there for you to decide to drop in cascades alone. The only thing you need to keep in mind is that from them up there, it is quite easy if they are in trouble to jump down to try and get to you and to the protection of their own teammates. If you are in trouble right now, it's going to be rather difficult to open the door and superman jump to the top of the watchtower. You can't quite do that. Because of that, once again, your mindset in this hot drop needs to be that at the start of this game, you have to be ready to dip out if things aren't going your way. There's not much you can do to force a fight right now into the safety of your teammates unless they are nice enough to drop down to help you, so you are dependent on them as long as you are in trouble. Whereas if they are in trouble, they can drop down and even if you aren't paying attention or didn't notice, it still creates more opportunities for them to survive and make plays. The other thing to point out here is that you pinged your house way too late for them to be able to use that information to perhaps drop close or at least keep an eye on you, in case enemies end up being close by. So this comes down once again to understanding how to play in such a way that your teammates can actually play around you and you are forcing value. Had you picked another location, even if you ended up going to a slightly different house, if you gave them the general direction earlier, they would have known where you are before dropping and whether there's enemies near you and hopefully use that information well. Even if they didn't, it is up to you to make sure that they have it in case they want it. Of course, you may have said this on mic, but we don't know. After looting the first house, we see you going into the middle of the river and towards where the enemy teams potentially are. Now you end up changing your mind and going to the building on your right anyway, but just wanted to point out that once again your instincts here are very dangerous. In the river you are visible from every direction, you are slowed down, you have no cover and you are in no way close to your teammates. So whatever was going through your head here that you were considering, I'm happy you didn't go with it. So instead of running out into the river, that same amount of time, just a couple of seconds, you could have stood at a window or on the outside of your building at the doorway where you were safe, just looked over towards where there were enemies and then taken this bridge across to the house. It would have been way safer, during that time it would have also been more beneficial for your teammates to come over towards you you, and if you had scouted an enemy, you could have given your teammates useful information that might be useful to them before they make their way down. 
Before we move on I want to point out that the houses you chose to loot were actually a good idea. You are close to where your teammates can drop down on you and you are on the outside of Cascade so even though it is a hot drop, if a fight occurs now or if enemies spot you, you will be able to work your way from the outside inwards. So although you can definitely tighten up your pathing here, I do think the places you have chosen are quite good. After you finish up looting the second house, we see that you have a Spitfire and a Flatline. That means that any ammo you use in one of these weapons will also damage the reserve for the other weapon, so you have to be aware that you don't want to spend your ammo willy-nilly and you want to ensure you can kill anyone that you engage with. On top of that, you don't have an armor. Putting these pieces of information together, I would not in any way want to push into the hot drop of Cascades right now before my teammates are here. I would probably go to the top of the watchtower to link up with my teammates before deciding where to go next, or I would make my way north along the river towards the isolated house with the shed next to them where you can loot more safely, still within a safe range of your teammates. Now I do like that you try to take a little bit of high ground before getting close to Cannes Gates. Also your lingering here gives your teammates more time to catch up with you, so that is good. But when you got caught off guard getting shot from behind, you should know they got the first shot on you while you don't have armor, they are closer to cover giving them a peeker's advantage. You have to 180 then figure out where they are by the time they have shot you twice and you don't have any cover that close to you. So before even bothering to turn around and shoot back or even figure out where this person is, you should have been in the mindset like I was mentioning before of being ready to dip out once you get engaged on if the engage is not in your favor. This engage isn't in your favor at all so your instant reaction needs to be to get behind cover and figure out if your teammates are on their way to back you up. If we quickly look at where you went down we will notice that literally less than half a second after you got knocked your teammate's smoke showed up to cover you. So had you been in cover half a second earlier, creeped away from this person trying to finish you, or done anything else to prolong the time you had waiting for your teammates, you would have been able to survive here even though you got knocked. The enemy would have still showed up to try and finish you and they would have been punished for it before actually getting the finish. You did not have a knockdown shield, so maybe if they were truly determined they could still finish you off while being killed by your teammates, but at least it would have been the right play. And you would have once again forced value even if you did not contribute anything personally just by playing around your teammates and being aware of whether they are or aren't in a position to help you, you could have forced value onto them. After you get respawned you make your way back over to your box and you know that the enemy team is nearby and knows that you just got respawned. Your teammate offers to drop a drone even though you don't have any health damage taken but shortly afterwards while you loot your box you do take damage to your health and right there is where you should use the cover that you have as well as the pressure that your teammates are putting on the enemy team to heal up with this bot. The reason it's important to do that now is because you have the opportunity to heal while your teammates are fighting and you are safe. That way you are healed up if your teammates have to heal and you can stop the enemy team from pushing in to punish them for healing. You're basically constantly alternating who pressures the enemy team and who heals so that you cover your teammates when they are healing and you create a safe environment for them to win the fight. The more time you buy for your team the more opportunities all of you have to make plays. And by rushing in here now, being risky with very little health and overexposing yourself right next to your teammate in a location the enemy is already spamming at, you are denying your team that value and safety that you could have provided by healing up first. This is where it's important to remember that you can't help your teammates if you can't help yourself, and your health is one of the most valuable resources you have to ensure that you can cover for your teammates. Right now you can't, they can cover for you, so please use that. You do get a very nice knock on the lifeline which gives you some armor to work with and as soon as you have that armor that gives you even a little bit more time to go for the heal while your teammates are still healthy. Instead you decide to shoot the enemy from quite far away with an alternator which only has 30 spare bullets. Obviously this is not a very effective play and you should have still gone for the heal so that you can continue to provide help to your teammates. Given that you have no ammo in your flatline, I also think you should have picked up the hemlock or another weapon off the body just because at the very least it's going to have a couple bullets in it. And it's not like the flatline is such an overpowered weapon that you want to hold onto it even as it doesn't even have a clip in it. Then as you approach the building you use your void walk as you're in the doorway and you're literally about 0.1 seconds away from being out of the line of sight of the enemies where they can't even hit you so I'm not quite sure why you're using your void walk here and it seems like a big waste of the cooldown. If I was an enemy Octane or Pathfinder, I definitely would have pushed you in the building right there because that's a free kill. Also, look at your teammates' health while you're doing that. 
Your Bangalore already went down and you haven't provided any covering fire that your teammate needed to try and heal up. They've basically had to play around themselves while also trying to respawn you and protect you from grabbing your gear. Now your decision to go into this house and have to wait for your into the void ability, you're not actually providing any value for your teammates. They've helped you out quite a lot so far and they've respawned you once in both of these games already, yet you're kind of just ignoring them and doing your own thing when you could have easily covered for them. Luckily. The lifeline does manage to heal up by themselves and get your teammate up so that is a great play from them but I just wanted to point out and I'm not trying to be unnecessarily harsh here but I really hope you realize that in these last 20 seconds or so you just haven't provided any value for your team and they've done awesomely. We never took the lifeline up on that heal so as you can test this enemy you did get a couple nice shots in earlier and now so your aim is not too bad there but you get punished for your lack of taking the healing and a longbow can one shot you. Luckily your teammates got you covered once again and you end up healing. I would really crouch here because you can still get headshot by the longbow. Jumping is fine to try and get some information but crouch first then move to the left or right and then jump to see over this little fence just so they don't already know where you are. Otherwise if you get jumped it's very easy to headshot you and get a free kill. After a little bit you move behind the house which is also great cover that works just fine just as well. Just do it a little bit earlier because a good player would have certainly killed you quite instantly there. And your position there, although that side of the house is very open and anyone flanking or getting behind you would certainly instantly kill you, you are behind the cover and safety of your teammate, so you can easily heal up there whilst looking around and seeing if a third party shows up. And as you guys chase towards the last enemy, the only thing to point out right here is that you should really be going for headshots here. If the enemy is not aware of you, you're this close and you're able to get the first shots in on them, especially as they aren't even strafing, they're just running into a straight line, you really should be going for headshots. As well as, once they do a lot of damage back to you, you have the immense advantage here of not only being 2v1, but already getting the drop on this opponent, so there's no need for you to take any risks here. This is a one fight as long as you don't throw, so all you need to do is make sure you stay alive. Don't overcommit to this opponent, just out pressure them, you'll win anyway. And I'm not sure if it is because you want to kill for yourself, you're just an aggressive player, or you're not really confident in your teammates' abilities, but you overcommit to this enemy when you've got a free win in front of you and you end up going down for it, where you could have just dealt some damage and healed up while your teammate continued the damage on them, and if your teammate needs to heal then you continue pressuring them, and so on and so forth. Cover for one another. Moving on towards later of the game, there's four teams left and you guys have got a very defendable high ground position. It is however also a very common power position for teams to hold, so it's not necessarily like you get the drop on anybody, but thankfully you do as you see a team coming from the bunker area. From here you've got a great engage on them, you have high ground, you're holding the zone, they are taking damage from it and only a part of the large house underneath you is in the zone, so if they end up going for there you know exactly where they are and it's very difficult for them to push out. The only danger in this situation is that a third party shows up as the circle is somewhat small and they'll probably hear you and instantly be able to figure out where you are. Because of that I want to see you take a good engage together with your team. I'd personally use my portal, open it up here and push up to them. That way you can easily get back on top, you're far less likely to be third partied and you don't have to spend a lot of time shooting from up here because that's only going to attract enemies to you. If an enemy shows up now they will probably be coming from the cascade sites rather than the bunker site because of zone. So they'll be coming for your team and not for this enemy. You will not end up on the outside, but rather on the inside of this fight. Hence why I wouldn't be spamming from up here, but rather would be looking for a quick and effective way to engage. You guys hold up here for a little bit too long. After you and your teammates start shooting at these enemies, also you turn around and just start looking over the edge for a while. Now in one sense of the word I do think that's decent because I think that you're scouting for a third party or just kind of checking the area to see if it's safe. Which is good, because I did mention that that is a risk point right here. But I also want you to realize that while scouting is good, during all this time you, again, haven't been providing any value to your team. They're shooting this team right now, they're considering an engage, and you're just not there. So while turning around and keeping an eye on your back is great, and you want to communicate that with your team, find the right timing for it. Because once a fight starts, you really should be playing around your teammates a lot more than you are. Eventually you see one of the opponents going out of zone and you guys decide to push in. It's a 3v1 because you're staying together. We once again see the power of coordination and it is an easy kill from there. I'm going to assume that that finisher was accidental given how fast it happened, but just in case it wasn't or in case somebody doesn't know, I still wanted to point out this opponent went down, did not appear to have a self res shield, meaning they probably have teammates still in the area. Because of that, using a finisher out in the open here is probably not a great idea. 
you are close to your teammates, so it's not the most risky, but you still make yourself a pretty open target, obviously. Next up, while you were healing, you see the icons of some grenades nearby. If you knew that even though you saw the icons, they still were not close enough to hit you. In that case, I have nothing to tell you here. But in case you didn't know that, which most people don't know that the icons are a bit misaligned and not quite accurate, then you really should have cancelled your heal here and went towards the right. Now you shouldn't always cancel your heal for a grenade. The reason is that you're using a shield cell. A shield cell will only heal 25 armor, so if you're in the blast radius of a grenade, it's always going to deal more damage than you are about to heal with that shield cell. If you're using a battery and you have enough armor left to tank the grenade, it is completely fine to keep the heal going, because even after you take that damage, the battery will finish and your armor will be full. Now as expected from the amount of time that you've spent spamming from the high ground, a team did push up behind you and the fact that you ended up leaving that area instead of diddly daddling for too long is the reason you're still alive so that is very good. And I think the fact that you scouted around at the start of the fight, although the timing was wrong, is still very nice because that team could have killed you if you hadn't. Then your teammate moves towards the middle of the river, which once again isn't a great position to fight from, and I think that you noticed that as well because you refuse to go in with them and keep on moving forward while healing and looking towards the other team on the watchtower really far away. Now I like your awareness and the fact that you are scouting for a possible third party, knowing where this last team is. However, you are once again, once the teammates need you to cover for them, ignoring them to go do something else in another direction entirely. Whilst it's always a good idea to scout and be aware of the fact that there might be a third party coming, you take too long, the timing is off and you go far too far away from your teammates to really provide any value. You are not there to cover for them now if they get pushed and keep in mind that you can always extract value out of your teammates even if they're making a bad play. In this situation, their positioning is poor underneath the enemy team in the river, but you can quite easily from where you are take a defendable position behind or above them that way if any of the enemies do decide to push up on them, you can punish those enemies for pushing. After cleaning up that fight, you know where the last two teams are. There is one on the high ground that you just shot at where you came from, and there is one team on the watchtower. You guys have to get moving because of the zone, and as you guys move your way into Cascades for the final fight against these two teams, I like the positioning that you take. You are on the building above your teammates, whether they are inside or outside of this building, you being above them and being able to cover them as well as drop down to the safety of the building or your team is perfect. So when it comes to covering and playing around your teammates, these are the kind of positions that I really like from you. The thing that I don't like about it is that you have once again put yourself in a position where if these teams both push in towards the next zone from the watchtower and the high ground that you were at, you have once again put you in the middle rather than the outside of the team fight. Especially in the late game, it's very easy to figure out where these teams are coming from or likely to be coming from and to keep an eye out for them. You've been doing a very good job of scouting for where these teams are, so I really want to see you communicate not only where they are with your team, but where you should go to make sure you end up on the outside of this fight in the future. We can see the value of scouting right here, which I have mentioned you do very well once you see the enemy team from the high ground pushing out through the zone. You can't quite kill them from here, but you're able to pressure them out just by shooting at them and making them scared of pushing your defendable position. So the fact that you're in a great spot here leads to that enemy dying in the zone. Now there's only one team left that has tried to push up on you, and because you were able to pressure out this enemy, it's a free cleanup for you and your team. You do almost die here in a situation where you should have dipped out earlier because you had cover from your team and from where these two enemies come from you can definitely see the danger of getting sandwiched here but the fact that you scouted well and held a defendable position really paid off. Overall I would say I'm seeing you actually do the right things. Although I'm harping on the fact that your timing is off, you're taking all the right steps, you just need to get a bit more experience and make them faster. I would like to see you apply this knowledge to your team specifically a bit more and figure out how to play around them more effectively, but if you do, I'm sure you'll be fine. Really hope that was helpful. Peace.